time to do uh, the first mathematical model for option pricing. Uh, it's the classical benchmark simplest model for pricing options in a multi-period uh, binomial tree model. We've already talked about it. Now let's see how to do that. Okay, just to remind you what the definition of the binomial tree or Cox Ross Rubinstein CRR model. Uh, you have a stock price which moves, uh, gets multiplied by u each time it goes up and gets multiplied by d each time it goes down, which means that going up and down is the same as going down and up, so that it will meet here in the same value. Uh, and actually for option pricing we don't need these probabilities, but in principle the model has some probability p that the stock goes up and the probability 1 minus p that the stock goes down. Okay, uh, I, I will, so previously I used 1 plus R for the how much $1 goes up during the period. I'm now also going to be using uh, sometimes or, or most of the time E to the R delta T, where delta T is the length of the period, uh, typically everything in, annually in years. Okay? And this was the condition we had before with 1 plus R that E to the R delta T has to be between u and, uh, and d, the up and down factor. Okay, so that's the model. Um, to explain, I mean, it's going to be actually quite simple to price in this model. There's going to be an algorithm which is simple, but, but to understand that algorithm rigorously mathematically, I want to talk about uh, martingale pricing in this model and how to use the expectation formula in terms of martingale pricing. Uh, so first of all, I need the following fact from uh, probability theory. Uh, if I have a given random variable that uh, will be known, uh, will no longer be random at time capital T, so, so think of an of option or something like that. And if I define m of t to be conditional expectation of that random variable, uh, from the point of view of today, and then I vary t, right? So this, this is going to be uh, a <coughs> process in t, uh, and, and random process, uh, because conditional expectation for some future time is, is still going to be random. So th the claim is that this process is a martingale. Okay? And this is a standard way to get a martingale. You take conditional expectation for every time t of some future uh, random payoff for, for every time t less than or equal to t, I didn't write it here, but small t should be less than or equal to capital T. Uh, so let me just write that here. This is, this is of course, less than capital T. Okay? So uh, let, let's, let's check that this is a martingale, simply from the definition of a martingale. Uh, definition of the martingale says that the expectation at any time s less than t, for every s and every t bigger than s, Condition expectation at s of m of t, so condition expectation of the future relative to s has to be equal to today's value. Okay? Think here I'm using s for today and t for the future. Uh, so this is what I want to prove, that, uh, that, that left-hand side is equal to this right-hand side. Uh, there are two, two equalities in, in, in the middle. Well, by definition, m of t is this, expectation t at x. So I'm just going to sub substitute for m of t, I will substitute e t of x. And now there is a fact from, from probability theory that if you take two expectations, one with respect to less information, which is time s, and then one with respect, respect to more information uh, in the future, information by time t, then what survives is averaging over taking expectation or averaging over less information. Okay. It's kind of intuitive. You know, if I average over more information and then again average over less information, what's going to survive is uh, the average over less information. Okay. In probability, this is called a uh, law of iterated expectations. And, and simply that's what it says. I'm not going to prove it uh, carefully, but I'm just going to tell you what it is. Uh, so expectation with s, expectation t, when s is less than t, the only thing that survives is expectation with respect to less information, which is expectation at time s. Okay? So because of that, ES et of x is ES of x, and by definition, this is m of s. 
So we prove that expectation of the future given today's information uh, is just uh, today's value of this process, and therefore that process is a martingale. Okay, so this is useful to know, uh, and uh, I'm going to apply it here. All right, so I know from martingale pricing that I have this. Here I, I wrote it in the discounted form. Uh, previously I, I was writing it uh, maybe slightly differently, if I remember correctly. Previously I, I I, I didn't have this here, but I had it here as t minus small t. Yeah. Uh, so, but but now I just move e to the minus r t to the other side. I'm going to delete these things. Uh, so, so you can write it like this. Uh, what this really says is that uh, the discounted price uh, of some claims, c of t, is expectation of the future discounted value of that claim, and therefore discounted price of, of, of a claim is a martingale. Okay? So, so uh, simply put, price of anything, value of anything in an in in un under a pricing probability Q, under martingale probability Q, is a martingale. The pr discount, discounted prices. Discount price of the stock is a martingale, discount uh, value of a wealth process is a martingale, but this also says that discounted price of uh, any claim is also is also a martingale. Okay? So it's not so surprising that we have this. Right? So discounted price uh, of a claim C is a martingale. Uh, so so why do I need this? Uh, because I mean this formula I I is connecting prices lowercase t. To the price of, of, of oops, what's that? Well, don't need that. And this. Right. So it's connecting the price at small t to the price at capital T. But what I want, I really want the connection between t and t plus delta t, between today and tomorrow, right? Or to today and the next period. Right. So because it's a martingale, I also have that type of formula uh, for any two times including between times t and t plus delta t. Okay? So discounted price today is going to be expectation of discounted price one period from now. Okay? And I discount by t plus delta t, and I have c of t plus delta t here. Okay? Why is this helpful in, in, in something like a binomial tree, in a model like that? Because I will start from the maturity where I know what the price will be given that I know where I am in the node which which price of the stock is in the node of the tree and I'll go backwards one period by one period I'm going to just do pricing a period by period as if it were a series a sequence of one period models single period models and I'll just go back 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 un until I get to today and I'll get my price okay so that that's the idea it's a simple idea it's based on the martingale property of prices, so written in, uh, written in uh, mathematical terms. Uh, and uh, I, I now move back this R in, uh, into the expectation. So price today is expectation of the discounted price uh, tomorrow, or the pe one period from now, written like this. Now, this is always true, uh, but I, I now use it in the binomial model. So, and this is simply going to be discounted Q probability times uh, C up value. So if the stock goes up, that's the value of the claim at T plus delta T plus y minus 1 minus Q C down value at T plus delta T. Okay. Again, the point is, so this is a looks abstract formula, but it's actually very easy to implement. We will do examples in a, in a minute. Uh, you just look at the two values at the branches at the end of the next period, you average them, you discount them, I get a price at the, at the root of those two branches. Okay? So it's really like a single period model um, pricing. We, we already had a formula like this in the single period model pricing. So I can just, but I can do this in every period and I just do single period pricing and go backwards. Okay? So that's, that's the point of this slide. All right, so let's work with that. All right, this is graphically presenting what I, what I just told you. Um, this works for, for so-called path-independent payoffs. 
so G is any function. It can be call option function or, or put option function, but it can be any function of the final final payoff, uh, final value of the stock price. Okay, so that's called a path independent payoff. So it only depends on what the value of the stock is at the end. It doesn't depend what the path of the stock was uh, before that. So uh, uh, we know, we will know what these values are at the very end. It's just g function at s u times u cubed, uh, g function times s u squared times d, and so on. And depending how much the stock moved, you just evaluate the option payoff at maturity. So this is maturity here at the very end. And then I'll just go backwards and price using my formula from the previous slide, the expectation formula, t plus delta t type of thing. I'm going to get the price here at time 2. So this is at 3 period 3, right? Uh, 3. This is, a, this is time 3. This is time 2. So I'm going to get prices CO2, 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 three, three different in principle prices by just averaging like this, going backwards. Then I'm going to average these two going backwards, these two going backwards to get CO1, and then these two going backwards, discount and average. And finally, I'll get backwards to CO0, and that's what I want. I want the price of the claim today. Okay? So, so that, that's, that's the algorithm. Not, not only it's simple to do by, by hand, it's also simple to do, uh, um, it's also simple to do uh, in a computer if you have, if you have uh, uh, many periods in the tree, uh, this is easy to program in the computer. In fact, if you go online and do and look for option pricing online, even like Scholes pricing, which is continuous time pricing, actually the numerical algorithm most likely is doing exactly exactly this. Uh, because this, as we will discuss later, in the limit, when delta t goes to zero, when you get smaller and smaller periods, which means more branches in this, during the same maturity time, um, when you let delta, that period go to zero, the length of that period goes to zero, it turns out this converges to the Black-Scholes formula. Yeah? So this is also a numerical algorithm for computing Black-Scholes prices, not just binomial tree prices. Uh, I, I will discuss a little bit practical implementation uh, later, but, but let me just mention in terms of practical implementation, this delta t to actually get close to the black shoals doesn't have to be close to zero. It has to be uh, pretty much like one day. Okay? So uh, 1 over 365, or usually you count the number of days in the year as the number of working days on Wall Street, so it's may maybe 1 over 252. Uh, but so, so for a three-month option, something like 100 periods is enough. Okay? Uh, so it's about, about one day uh, is enough to get you a pretty precise idea, precise number for the value of your, op of your option. Okay, so that's the backwards algorithm, just backwards averaging and discounting values. Uh, let's just make sure that we know how to do that in, a, in an example. Right, so here is an example. I'm going to price a call option in a two-period model, but it would be the same in a three-period model, or it uh, doesn't matter how many periods. Uh, uh, strike price 100, up factor 1.1, down factor 0.9, strike price, sorry, this was stock price 100, this is strike price also 100, interest rate 0.05. Um, we Delta T I, I, I gave here as 1, although that's not uh, necessarily realistic, uh, but let's just put delta t equal to 1. Uh, now, p star I have to compute. Uh, p star is my q. Uh, th this graph is taken from, from the book, uh, and there we use p star, uh, which is computed in the next slide. So let me move to that next slide. Uh, here I, I denoted q, so this is the p star from the previous slide. Uh, so I'm using this formula. I had this formula before, except I was using 1 plus r. Now I use uh, e to the r delta t. It just depends on how we agree to measure the interest rate, whether it's continuously compounded or simple interest rate during the period. So if I do it like this, with that u and d, I can compute q to be 0.7564. Okay. And um, going back again. Uh, all right, so first, what do you do? You, you first compute stock prices in your model. 100 times 1.1 1 .1 is 110 times 1.1 1 .1 is 121. 110 times 0 0.1 is 
9 is 99. And then here I have 100 times 0.9 is 90, times 0.9 is 81. Okay, so the upper values are stock prices. 100, 100, 10, 121, 99, 90, and 81. Now I'm going to compute option prices. I start at the end, at, at, the in, at maturity. It's a call option, European call option. So the payoff here is 121 minus 100, 21. The payoff here is 99 minus 100, that's negative. Maximum is 0, it's 0. 81 minus 100 is negative. Maximum 0, 0. So, fine, I have my option prices at the end. Now I'm going to average them backwards, two by two, Bran these two branches, these two branches, to get prices here. Okay, this one is easier, uh, very easy, because I'm averaging zero and zero, the price here will also be zero. Okay? Uh, here I'm averaging 21 and zero, and then I have to discount. So this is the number. Let's go back to the next slide where this is done. Uh, okay, I'm averaging 21 times Q plus weighted average uh, by Qs and 0 times 1 minus Q. And then I have to discount. Okay. I use my Q from here. If you do the computation, it should be 15 something, 15, 11 or something like that. Okay, fine. So again going to my graph uh, so that's how I got this number I just averaged these two by Q's discounted now to get the price today I have to average this one 0 and 15.1088 in the same way completely the same way right so I do that Q times this number Q times 15.08 plus 1 minus Q times 0 discount and I get 10.87. That's my price. If I believe in this model, of course, this is a very simplified, more simplistic model. But assuming this model uh, is what you are working with, the, uh, the price, in, 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 uh, you assume that's your approximation of reality, this would be the price of the option, the no arbitrage price of the option in this model 10.87 something. Okay? So, Hopefully, it looks simple. If not, I mean, you will have you know to solve uh, homework assignments, problem sets, uh, and you can of course always re uh, read this and review this. Uh, but it, it's really it's really simple algorithm, just averaging backwards by Q and one minus Q and discounting averaging backwards, uh, knowing what the option payoff is by computing the option payoff at the very end and then averaging backwards. Okay, that's the binomial pricing. It came historically after, in the 80s, after Black Scholes. Uh, uh, maybe I, I already told you this, but uh, it, uh, it's actually simpler than Black Scholes and it gives a numerical way to approximate Black Scholes. Uh, and uh, it's a very, it's a benchmark model. It's the simplest possible model to do this. Okay. Okay, so that's for this set of slides.